Good afternoon, my name is Bill Goodman, I drive a Fulton Foundation. Um, I'm here to give you a bit of a talk on Fulton stability today. And also, I'm going to tell you how and why we overload our focus on a regular basis, every day. Before we get into it, um, I'd like to just do a little bit of an icebreaker. And if you'd like to, again, uh, state your name and what you do, please. Bill, my name's Andy Blarble. I'm a forklift driver. I've been with TNT for 29 years. And, um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy my job. I, I do actually like my job, yeah. Thank you. Darren Holt, been with TNT for 14 years. Uh, yeah, clock hand at the moment. Thank you. John Hillis, OHS advisor. Um, also known as OHS John, been at TNT for a wonderful 12 months so far. Uh, Ross Kennedy, I'm the regional ops trainer, been at TNT for 18 years. Jared Hill, been at TNT for the last 27 years, working as a corporate driver, supervisor, ops manager, um, currently working as a safety advisor. Check of all the trades. Done pretty much most of them. My name is Nicholas Merrill, I've been here for just under 10 years. Um, I enjoy a fork of a little bit of time here, leading hand, working in the area, AM. Mm -hmm. Okay, a bit of uh, WHS. Obviously, we're in a training room, uh, tables, chairs, tripping hazards. Um, if the siren goes off or there's an emergency of some sort, we will evacuate through that door, across the customer collect, and assemble in the assembly area. If the fire gets to the stage where we can't get out the door, I have a brick. <laughs> <laughs> and this brick will go through that window and we can escape. But I have another use for that. Is this demonstration time? Can, we, can you demonstrate the brick, please, just to make sure? <laughs> I will give you a little bit of information and then we're going to go. I'm going to go through. Stability triangle. I'm going to go through the center of gravity. I'm going to go through the principle of leverage. I'm going to go through load centers and rating plates. And then I'm going to explain to you how we overload <coughs> our focus every day. And then I'll suggest a, a way to rectify the situation. But first, I'll give you this. Stability triangle, forklifts. This is why I gave you a hand out because I'm not good at art. <laughs> forklifts have a rigid suspension. They have a central pivot on the rear to allow for some movement in the rear to travel over uneven ground. That gives us a stability triangle. The centre of gravity on an unladen forklift is around about here somewhere. Put a load on the front. The load itself has a centre of gravity, <coughs> which causes the combined centre of gravity to move forward into here somewhere, depending on the weight. <laughs> <laughs> now, forklifts. The centre of gravity must remain within the stability triangle, or the forklift will become unstable and tip over. Forward tipping usually results from excessive braking or overloading, which we'll get into later. Sideways tipping is when turning too fast, especially with mass elevated or load elevated, because it causes the centre of gravity to come outside the stability triangle and the full tip will tip over. <coughs> Excuse me. You'd think that an unladen forklift would be safer than a loaded forklift uh, as far as tip over is concerned because the centre of gravity is back here, but actually because it's closer to the sides, it is less stable, especially with the mass elevated. 
So you drive across a ramp or you turn too quickly, uh, leverage will pull you over. And that's why I have my brick. Leverage. You can hold this brick here all day. Doesn't matter. You hold it out right there. Let's see how long you can hold it out right there for. That is leverage. The brick's not heavier, but it is effectively heavier. It wants to fall down. And then you put a bit of momentum with leverage, and you're running around with your forklift and the mast elevated, and you're trundling along like this, and you change direction. That brick or the leverage wants to go in the original direction. So you turn, goes over there, pulls you sideways. That is leverage. Now we get into low centers. Again, I'm going to try and draw a picture, but don't worry about it. Fun forklift. <laughs> cool. Low center is measured from the heel to the forks, right there. The Australian standard is 600 mil, because the standard pallet is 1,200 mil. So you have a two and a half ton forklift in theory and you should be able to pick up close to your two and a half ton but anything you add in front of that uh, fulcrum sorry I forgot about fulcrums that is the fulcrum directly beneath the front axle if the fulcrum is going to chip that's where it's going to chip any weight you add in front of the fulcrum reduces your capacity. So we have side shift on our forklifts, reduces your capacity. We have blade separators on our forklifts, reduces your capacity. We have extended forks, long forks, reduce your capacity. I now have another little hand out. These are photographs of actual rating plates. I haven't put any information on these ones. As a little assessment tool, which I am required to make, I would like you to try to identify the load centers and the rating capacity of the exploded plates. Please. Sorry, any other? Ready plate number one. It's a model 25, effectively a two and a half ton forklift. But all these forklifts are fitted with side shift and fork positioner attachments as written on the side of the rating plate here. Rating plate number one says we have a load center of 600 mil and a rated capacity of 1,930 kilos. That same forklift, or the same class of forklift, extend our load center to 1065 in picture number two, and capacity drops to 1240 kilos. The third one is again a two and a half ton or rating class 25 forklift. Our load center is now 1220. The capacity has reduced to 1,030 kilos, less than half of what is originally rated at. And 1220 is a number I want you to remember. 1,220 mil. The third one is a 35 forklift, effectively a three and a half ton forklift. It has a load centre of 760 and a capacity of 2,310 kilos. The fourth one is a 
Model 30, three-ton forklift. This one has a 1065 load center and a rated capacity of 1670 kilos. And the last one is the liquidity eye drive. Uh, it's a two and a half ton or 20, class 25 forklift. It has a 915 load center, has um, three quarter blades, and it has a rated capacity of 1,370 kilos. At TNT, we use eight by eight cages put our freight in. An 8x8 eight eight cage is 2,440 mm, which gives us a load centre of 1,220. All of our forklifts in this depot cannot pick up these cages, except for the seven tonner and the four and a half tonner. And the four and a half tonner is a dog of the critter because they played with the um, speed governor and it surges. And the last thing you want when you're picking up a heavy cage is full because it's surging. It goes like this and you're going to drop the cage. All right. You may think that this is just my opinion that we overload our forklifts, but with these photos, you'll find that it is based on fact. Every day, we get these 8x8 eight eight cages into the depot on the trucks. The usual forklift that's doing the unloading on the floor is a Model 25 with the 1220mm blades, a uh, load centre with a capacity of 1030 kilos. Half the time he has to call for somebody with a three tonne forklift to help him get the cage off because he just can't pick it up. These cages, obviously there's two sorts, the older style, they have a a basic tear weight, empty weight, of around 800 kilos. The newer ones have an empty weight of around 600 kilos. That's before you put anything in them. And then, we have to move them around. If you go out on the floor on any given day, you'll see forklifts bouncing, trying to move these cages around, uh, especially dangerous is the incompat dock. Once we get them out of the truck and we move them down there, they have to put them up onto the dock. The only way to really do that, whenever we elevate a load on a forklift truck, we're supposed to stop, get the mast vertical and raise the load. You shouldn't raise the load with a tilted back because of the stability of triangle. But when you're putting one of these big cages on the dock, the only way to do it is to leave the mast tilted back, to bring the load centre back as far as possible, stop in front of the dock as close as you can, elevate it slowly, and then creep forward and put it on the dock. If the fault is going to tip forward, it'll hit the dock or fall onto the dock, and it won't hurt anybody as such. So, we have the issue of uh, these eight by eight cages coming into the depot, and as you can see by the weight, I'll go through a couple. This one, older style eight by eight, it weighs 2.19 tonnes. Nothing is going to pick that up safely. It's not within the rated capacity of any of our forklifts. What about the one in International, the big one? The seven-tonner, it will yeah. pick them up. But we only have one. We have one seven-ton forklift. 
commercial bank here open up wide enough for it to actually go into the pockets of the cages? I'd say they would because we can get some very heavy cans. Really, yeah, they, really they, they will. Quite they do? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They don't pretty wide. But it's only one fourth that we have, and um, they use it for the aircraft cans. And it's just an issue. We have problems every day with these 8 by 8 cases. Another one. This is a newer type. It's a, a tear weight of 610 kilos. It weighs 1.78 tonnes load. And this is all, you have to all remember that this is at a load centre of 1,220 mil. So it's reducing whatever fault if you've got. It's reducing its capacity by more than half. Because they also have side shift and they have blade positioners and whatever times they have. I've got you thinking, John, I know. <laughs> In here we have numerous. This one's 2.05, 2.2. All loaded 8x8 eight eight cages. Factual evidence. 1.78, 1.87. As an example in the back, I've got a GMH cage. GMH cages are 8 by 6 So they'll give you a 915 load centre across the lateral part of it, which uh, obviously most forklifts here, the bigger forklifts, and my forklift can pick up. Um, the issue we have is with these cages, we can't make them any lighter because then we have durability problems and they'll fall to bits. Um, so, there's no simple answer. So what do we do about it? In September, we have another new batch of forklifts coming. In that new batch of forklifts, we have two three and a half tonnes. I propose that we should have at least six three and a half tonnes, um, and we put three on the floor, or actually, yeah, three on the floor for unloading, because they're no, diff no more difficult to drive than two and a half tonnes. Um, we need two, one for Nick and one for, for Paul, who can run the cages down to Incompax or bring them up to Country Dock uh, area, and we need one on the Incompax Dock be able to pick them up and put them on the dock. If we got six instead of two, that would solve 95% of our problems because we don't get all that many that are excessively heavy like these. We get one every now and again. But I've been um, researching this for a little while and I feel that uh, the only solution is to increase size of some of our forklifts. What's the big one up the back at the moment? The pink electric one? Uh, big electric one? Pink kind of pink I think that's the seven ton forklift. Ah, you talking about the pink one? The pink one. On the top. I think it's like three and a half. Well, maybe a three and a half tonner up there. Uh, there's one, we've got a couple of three and a half ton forklifts. One around the back uh, that they use on the Tassie dock all the time. They took one away not long ago. Um, so you're saying you need another one up at in or is that one up there already? No, we haven't got one at Incompats. We have not got a three and a half ton full to Incompats. We have a deal with three and a half ton, but it doesn't really... <coughs> three and a half ton full is outside. Yeah. And that has... It's one of the crappy... That's this one. It has a rated capacity of 2,310. That one there, the GJ35. But that's at a load centre of... That is a capacity of 2,310 at a load centre of 760. You increase that load centre, you're going to reduce that capacity. So we have an issue. Where's the time going? Yeah, about nine minutes. So, uh, any questions so far? If it's such an issue, how come the drivers are unloading the cages? 
What are you going to do, live along the track? It's, it's your responsibility to yeah. operate the equipment safely. That's true. TNT cannot force you to do something It's unsafe. also TNT's responsibility to give us the tools to do our job safely. You've got one. One? Yeah. Oh, at least it'll help. It'll get it unloaded and up. Yeah. We, we can't... The, the, the seven-ton forklift is an awkward critter to use inside the area where we unload trucks. It's big, it's bulky, and it's... Uh, but it, in, you're absolutely correct. It's the only one we have that can really legally and safely take these cages off the truck. So if it tips over, whose responsibility is it? Forklift driver. Exactly. So why are they doing it? Mostly because they don't have a choice. They've got to get the trucks. But the, the issue here is that we work in a transport company where they need to move the freight. The freight comes into the depot. They take it off the truck. The forklift becomes unstable. But if you are very careful and Gentle, you can get it off, and you can put it on the floor. Yeah, but not safely, and that's that's the issue. I mean, that is the issue. You've got to. But do we have a choice? Yeah, you do. What? Just stop the floor? No, well, you got the other fork, and that's what I'm saying. If if there is a way to do it, and the driver is choosing not to, it's the driver's responsibility. Yeah. So he can he cannot get into trouble by turning around and saying, "I'm not unloading that because it's not safe." He's covered. No. So it, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, but if that happens, you will get your forklifts because management will say, well, hang on, the job's not getting done. Why is it not getting done? Yeah. We need X, Y, and Z. Well, I know Next the week issue is them, there. I'll rent them. And the issue has been ignored for so long. Yeah, when we got these new forklifts, I actually tried to push to get the three tonners to three and a half tonners, but they got knocked back by management. Yeah, but that, that's what I'm saying. If it's unsafe to unload, they cannot force you to unload it. No, they can't. So you just stop there. And it's good to have this discussion because it gets it into the open. Yeah. That's why I brought this up. That's why I chose this subject to uh, put the cat among the pigeons because uh, it, it is an issue. And every day we have forklifts that are teetering. Yeah. Well, then the forklift driver shouldn't be doing it. I mean, really, he should be written up by the supervisor because yeah. unsafe work. But nobody practice. does anything because it, the the issue is being ignored. Yeah. And uh, so by bringing it into the open now, even though uh, it, it may not be the correct... Did you take it to the Work Health and Safety Committee? I haven't done anything until today. But now I'm bringing it into the open and I'm using this forum to do so. Yeah. Uh, now hopefully we can get things done. I'll go straight to the WHS Committee and so say, well, this is the issue. That's, that's what they're for. Yeah. Well, John's here. Yeah. We'll go to the advisor. Hey, you can do it. <clears throat> yeah. I could do all sorts of things. But, again, you know, um, I chose this topic because I realised that there's an issue and the issue is being uh, swept under the carpet. They've spoken about getting bigger forces before and they were knocked back. Um, in the next batch, there's only two three and a half ton fork is allocated and we need more and I was hoping that we'd get some senior management here um, to be able to discuss this with them but as it is it's in the open now and so we can uh, get things moving um, right now a bit summary have I raised the awareness of full stability of TNT? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, That's strong about his notes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you guys understand now how we do effectively overload our focus every day at TNT? A lot of what you're saying is, to me, operator error. Like you're talking about <coughs> when the mast up becomes more unstable. It does. Can you legally drive around with your mast up? You don't drive around with your mast up. Exactly. So, no, but I'm saying you take the cage off the truck. Now I'm talking about you're saying at the start, hey, it becomes so unstable if you drive around with the mast up. Yeah, but people do. You see them do it. They pick up a load and they'll sweat, elevate it, and then turn it into the truck to put it on the truck. That yeah. making the fault unstable. Um, these cages. Make the fork unstable when it's down low. 
because they are increasing the load centre to the extent that the centre of balance of the load is way out here. This centre of balance here is coming up here somewhere. I think what you're saying too is that a lot of our porkies need retraining if what you're saying is going on out there. It is going on. So they, Every day. they all need retraining then because... Well, the issue is um, it's not... Forklift drivers should take the initiative and say, I'm not going to do that. But uh, maybe they're under the pump, maybe they're not game enough to do so. Management should take the initiative and say, we shouldn't allow this to happen. And the supervisors should say, we shouldn't allow this to happen. So the fault is lies everywhere, not just with the forklift driver. It also lies with management, it lies with the supervisors, and with the company, because the company is required to provide a safe workplace. And to do that is required to provide the tools to do that. To but there is, but they're just not enough. No. The tools are there, just not well, enough. Well, one tool is there. Yeah. Uh, so we need more tools. Well, how many APH do you get a day? Oh, we get... Eight to ten, maybe? Yeah. Eight to ten. So ten or a dozen, yeah. you'd need the big forklift for <coughs> half an hour a day. No, because the trucks come in um, all up. I'm saying all up. You need the big forklift for half an hour a day, roughly, to unload no. eight cages off the truck and put up. On no, the because drop. you'd have to go down and get it. Yeah. You have to bring it up. You have to take that cage off. You have to take that cage to where it's got to go, whether it's in Capas or up in the country area. And then you have to take the big forklift back down the bottom and park it. And then the next truck would come in and it'd have another 8x8 eight eight on it. You'd have to go down and get the big fork. But operating time, and an hour? Process. An and hour? in the meantime, you'll have a truck come back from the airport with the big aircraft cans on it and they'll want to use the seven ton fork. Yeah. And so you'll have to wait until they've finished using it. But every, yeah. can, every can that comes in from the airport doesn't need the big one, I can promise no. you. So no, it doesn't. But again, the demand for one fork that would be too great. Yeah. And see, that, that's a classic example. If you had to do that much mucking around, management would notice, yeah. wouldn't they? But if you're just going to continue to work unsafe, management saying, well, it's getting done, look at the time, we've finished here at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Well, that, Whereas if it blows out to half past 8, 9 o'clock, they say, why? That's, say, that's well, what happens every day because the forklift drivers are under the pump because management says it needs to be done. And the forklift do it. Yeah. But now, I'll put it out into the open. And hopefully, we can resolve the situation by getting some bigger forklifts. So, I would like to thank you all for um, attending my little session. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and if you would please complete the documented feedback and give it back to me. And don't be afraid to say what I did wrong. And uh, I'll close and thank you very much for attending. Yeah, well done. Thank you very much. Well done. Very contentious, lovely. Well, you can bring it to the